everyone. I'm Jeff Teague in Raleigh, North Carolina. Today we're going to compare Toyota Tacoma Access Cab versus Double Cab. We all know truck manufacturers love assigning different terms or buzzwords or just names to the back seat or to the bed. We've got the King Cab, the Crew Cab, the Giant XXL Cab, or we've got an Access Cab. This Access Cab is 2022 Tacoma Celestial Silver. And then we've got this double cab here in this extremely tough Toyota Tacoma SR5 super white 4x2. By the way, that one there is also a 4x2. Exterior length, that could mean something to you, right? Is it going to fit in your garage? Well, with an access cab, you're always going to get what Toyota calls a six foot bed. This is 73.7 inches I can barely reach but 73.7 inches the whole length of this truck is 212 inches 0. 0.3 212.3 now a double cab that's a double headed monster here because it can have a five foot bed 60.5 or it can have a six foot bed like you see in the access cab, it would make it longer. So this truck right here is 212.3 inches long. Same as that bad boy right there, woo! But you can also get that longer bed and then it becomes 225 inches, 0.5. Should we get down? Get down tonight, uh, 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 uh. Another consideration is gonna be, like in this access cab, what does it look like inside? Well, from this vantage point, it looks exactly like the double cab does. Eight inch screen, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Amazon Alexa. The SR5, it has a key, it does not have the smart key. And then it's got nice fabric seats, durable, they last a long time. But what about the door, where's the handle? Well, on an access cab, I know some of you may know this already, but we're going to go through it. Oh, it's right here. Holla. So we've got the cab and a half now. So what do we have? We've got utility. Some people put in a utility package here and you can use it for work. Some people use it for storing things. Some people use it for people. And if you can notice here, well, of course you can notice if you would notice here, we just have jump seats with storage for whatever you want there. Nice big dump in though. That's cool. Cup holders. Nice beautiful landscaped view. Mm, I like that. So now what can we do here? It looks like one of those Star Wars droids in Attack of the Clones, right? (laughs) Must kill the rebels. Let's lift it up. You lift me up. And then what can we do here? Well, we can also take this and put that up as well. So now that's up. And then we've got storage. Well, not really storage, but we've got our spare tire equipment. Let's go to the other side. This side has storage more than the last side. Okay, all right. Put some bottles in there, some rope maybe. But look, this goes up. It stays in place just like the other one did. I just didn't do it right. So we've got room that we can stack, we can store, we can put people. So now let's compare that to the double cab interior. And it's gonna seem very business-like in the front, sort of like a mullet, but it's gonna surprise you in the back, also like a mullet. Still has the eight inch screen, the Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Amazon Alexa, even the front seats seem the same. So what's different? Yes, I know you know the difference, it's the back seat. I'm setting the mood. I'm building the story. So we've got that, which looks very more, we'll call it traditional-like, because the access cab certainly doesn't look traditional in terms of a full back seat but it serves a purpose. So this is the double cab here and I've got seats positioned in different ways so you can see legroom possibilities and potential. We're gonna talk about the differences next in headroom and legroom between the two 
options. Wonder if it's the same or different. What do you guys think? So what can we do in the back seats of a double cab? Well, we can tip them forward. It's like cow tipping. I mean, two cows wanted to go for entertainment on a Friday night. They're like, what do you want to do? I'm like, what do you want to do? Go to the movies? So you can also do under bed storage. Under bed. And then we can fold them down. Then we got the seats back. But we also have straps. Oh, now look at that. A different way to configure the seats. We only put one side down for now because I want to show you how to do it. This is how we do it. All hands are in the air and waving from here to there. If you see where I cut that clip, I just learned you have to take off not only the two headrests on the side, but on the center as well. So that's why I cut that clip to show you that I had to learn on the fly, but it's easy once you figure it out. Man, the possibilities, the versatility here. What? So what we can do here, we can have the seat all the way back, and I wanted to show that because, ugh, it's a tight fit back here, right? It's kind of tight, but then somebody could be kind to you and move the seat forward a little bit. Like this, that's a little better. And then this is with the seat already in that position. So again, it's kind of tight. This isn't something you'd want to take somebody cross country, I don't think, or across state lines, unless it was like the four corners out in the west, then you could just jump across from state. Get it? Yeah, that's the solution. Go to four corners. It's easy. But anyway, this is the space that you get. Headroom's real good. We're gonna pop up into this double cab now. This one has more legroom in the back seat than the access cab. Access cab posted by Toyota, 24.6 inches. This one has posted by Toyota, 32.6 inches. So eight more available inches of rear seat legroom. This one's set for me about 5'8", right in that range there in the front. So plenty of room. Now this one's more back, but even back you can see that there's a little bit more clearance. On the access cab, I was kind of hugging it like this. What about headroom? This one has more headroom in it, the double cab, than the access cab. This one has 38.3 inches of rear seat headroom. The access cab has 34.9. So a little bit less. It just depends on if you need that headroom or not. Access cab serves a purpose for sure. Maybe not the same purpose as a double cab. What's going through your mind right now? This next portion is gonna be dedicated to the window stickers. They're not apples to apples. The access cab, that's a four cylinder two wheel drive. This one here, the double cab, it's a V6 two wheel drive. But we will do apples to apples because if you get the V6 access cab four by two, that's gonna be about 31.6. In double cab format, V6, two wheel drive, double cab, 32.7. So it's about $1,100 more for the double cab than the access cab. Does that influence your decision one way or the other? So here we go. This is the four by two access cab. It's the four cylinder engine. So you can see a little bit of price adjustments when you go four cylinder, six cylinder, all that jazz, you can see the fuel mileage changes. Toyota Safety Sense. This has the 16 inch styled steel wheels. So this one starts at 28,490. Doesn't have any factory options on this specific one. That's shipping and handling to get it to the dealers. This one has some mats on it. And then that'll put it at just over 30,000 on this one. 30,034. Let's look at this double cab here. Woo, super wide, two wheel drive. Here's the fuel mileage. It's a little bit different than the access cab. Here we go. Just take a look at these. See, this one comes standard instead of styled steel wheels with 16 inch alloy wheels. And then you can upgrade to 16 inch black alloy wheels if you want to. 
So this is 32780, like I said. This one has a couple upgrades on it. It's got the blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert. That'll influence the final price. Here's the delivery. And the other option is the all weather floor mats. That puts this one down to, or up to, we'll call it, 34,894. And we'll call this next section, why buy a Toyota Tacoma? Well, it's the best selling mid-sized truck in America and it has been for, gosh, I think a decade and a half. There are a lot of choices out there. It's a competitive field, but people choose this one because it's rock solid tough. It's badass to the core. It's durable, dependable, reliable. You can drive it for hundreds of thousands of miles and boy, oh boy, can you take it places. You can get something like TRD Off-Road. You can get TRD Pro. You could take it on the toughest trails at the ridiculous angles that maybe other trucks can't get to. And then you've got on-road ones, SR5, Limited, TRD Sport. So many different choices out there for Tacoma lovers. So which one's best for you? Thanks for watching, everybody. Woo, we did it together. Which one do you like? Do you like access? Do you like double? Cab versus cab, who wins this battle? It's an individual choice, my friends. So, what do you think of Tacoma? What's your favorite trim level? Two wheel drive, four wheel drive, four cylinder V6. So many different factors, so many different trim levels. That's what's one of the appealing things about Tacoma, right? You can pick whichever one you want. Build it how you want it to, woo! Please follow me here by hitting subscribe and joining my Toyota community. And then I'm on Instagram and TikTok at Toyota Jeff Reviews. And my second channel, if you'd be so kind as to subscribe there, Auto Jeff Reviews. Looks at Toyotas and all brands. Thanks everybody, see you next time.